Hey everybody, this is Miss Jasmine representing for the Boys and Girls Club of Greater St. Louis. I hope everybody is having a uh, fun and wonderful day or night or evening. I'm coming back to you with another art video uh, here to teach you some more techniques about drawing and art. Uh, so what we're gonna do today, we are going to focus on different shading and drawing techniques. So, Basically, what we're gonna do, we're going to practice shading, learning about value, and overall, just kind of see how you can actually use these techniques in a project. So, some of the basic fundamentals about like drawing isn't actually like the actual drawing part. It's understanding about the light and shading and contouring and value and darkness and light and learning about colors and hues and everything else. Um, one of the main fundamentals is learning how to actually, you know, draw, shade. Uh, so we're gonna go over different techniques. Uh, first technique is gonna be hatching. So this is a shading technique. So the first shading technique we're gonna go over is hatching, which is basically when you just kind of go back and forth in a sketchy type of fashion, you can go from like dark to light. And that kind of gives you a good even way to kind of like, I guess, shade objects. You have cross hatching, which is the same as hatching. The only difference is just going back and forth and then you're going back and forth in another direction. Circleism, which is scribbling in little circles. Contour shading, which is basically, uh, shading according to the shape of an object and last but not least stippling so you just take your pencil do like little dots here and there um i'm going to go into further details as we go further into the lesson so you know you know you know i'm put the definitions probably somewhere later in the video so don't get too stressed out if you didn't get all that information so you know, now that we've gone over kind of a brief summary of what we're going to do, sit back, relax, you know, how I felt by last time, you know, get you some snacks. I like snacks. I like chips. I like chocolate too. Whatever you want. Soda, coffee. If you can drink coffee. Some of you guys are young. You, you, you don't need coffee. <laughs> so if you're ready, sit back and relax as we go further in this lesson. Now that we have gone over that brief introduction, uh, it's now time to talk about the material list. Now, this is a disclaimer, you do not need all of the materials listed in this video. Uh, it's important to use what you have in your possession. So it's okay if you don't have exactly what I have uh, going further in this video. That's Francis over there, that's my sweet boy, there for good luck. First material is paper. You want to make sure you just have paper. It can be computer paper, it can be sketchbook paper. Next, a pencil. I have a mechanical pencil and a regular pencil. Uh, I'll use both in this video. So, like I said before, don't get hung up on materials. Use what is there at your disposal. I have an eraser. I have a regular eraser and I have a needy eraser. Now, in particular, I love kneaded erasers. Uh, those erasers are very malleable and useful. You can just tear pieces out of it. Uh, very neat. Color pencils. Those are prism color color pencils. Again, you don't have to use the brand that I use. Use what you have at home if you do have color pencils. Crayons, uh, Crayola crayons. Real simple, I picked those for a reason to show that you can do everything in this video with crayons instead of color pencils. Um, and at the very least, if you don't have crayons or color pencils, you can use a regular pencil. So now we're gonna go into the different shading techniques. Um, now just to go further into what shading exactly is, it is literally adding uh, darkness to a specific area of your paper, illustration, diagram, etc. 
etc etc there are different types of shading so you have patching where you're literally moving your pencil back and forth as you can observe in the video I am basically starting off dark and going lighter as I go further uh, with my shading I mean, you can go in either direction it's literally you going back and forth uh, now just a, just a little tip if you want say lighter strokes you just have to have a lighter hand pressure on your pencil so you want to get really dark use more pressure you want to get really light less pressure this is an important note just to kind of take a lot of times when we first start off drawing we have no control of how much pressure we apply to the paper we're not quite sure about how much pen pressure to apply to the paper so kind of learning how much pressure to apply can not only help you when it comes to shading but even help in the case of preserving your art materials and your own physical health you know being too heavy-handed can you know warp your pencils uh, prime example the mechanical pencil I use if I use too much pressure drawing with it it can bend the nib uh, so keep in mind how much pressure you're using you know it can, it can even affect your like hand health so if you're somebody who clenches onto your pencil too tight or you uh, use too much pressure it can affect your wrist and your joints and your fingers so just be a little aware of that right now we're looking at myself practicing the circleism technique it's literally where you're just scribbling little circles um, using var variations of light and dark to get a uh, shaded look I didn't go over this before because I kind of missed it because I was talking about pin pressure um, earlier I was demonstrating cross hatching so that's very similar to hatching literally you're just going back and forth uh, instead of going in one direction next we're going to look at contour shading so contour shading is literally used as cross hatching or even using uh, circleism shading and basically you're shading according to the shape of the object so I wanted my option to look more three-dimensional I started at the edges making sure those were darker than what was in the center um, there's gonna be a better example later in the video but that is contour shading you're literally shading uh, based off the shape of the object so if the object is shaped in a circle like if it's a circle shape you're gonna shade according to that circle shape so as you see, I drew a circle and I am filling it in accordingly, making sure I'm staying in that circle and making sure I am shading out the outsides of it. Now you don't always have to go from the outside in, but the idea is you're shading according to the shape. Next up is the shading technique known as stippling now when you are stippling you are literally dotting your paper so if you want to get a darker value using stippling use darker and closer together dots and if you want a lighter value you use further apart a lighter dots so you're just making tiny marks into the paper uh, allowing you to make texture and, and allowing you to use that texture to create value so this is really good when it comes to drawing grass or leaves or anything that has a very distinct texture now what we're gonna do next um, I'm gonna use this worksheet I created this worksheet specifically for this lesson hopefully we can put this worksheet along with this lesson but if that's not the case uh, what you can do you can just get a blank white piece of paper 
get you a ruler or just something with a straight edge and draw a rectangle. Um, so what I'm doing right now is I am basically shading this rectangle from dark to light. So at the very end, I'm using uh, the most pressure, trying to get as, as much color and value out at the end. As I go in the middle, I use medium pressure. And then as I get towards the edge of the paper, it goes lighter using lighter pressure. What I'm doing next, I am showing that you can show value uh, by using different colors, uh, usually colors that are in the same family. So I'm using different shades of blue. Now, this is a little thing to understand about color is that each color has a value and if you don't know what value is value is the relative degree of lightness or darkness in a particular color so for example that dark blue at the very end has a lot of value it has a lot of darkness to it and then i have a mid-tone that has a minimum amount of darkness and then you know Lastly, I have a light blue color pencil that doesn't have that much value to it. Now what we're going to do, we're going to practice a little bit of contour shading. So I made sure to label where my light source is going to be for this particular exercise. If you don't know what I mean by light source, Basically, when you have an object, the light is usually shining in that object in a way to give the, the appearance of form. So when a light is shining on a spear, the part that is closer to the light will have little to no shade, where the part of the spear, or in this case, a circle, that is further away from the light would have a lot more shade or value. So as you see, I started at the dark at the end of the spear, coloring in that area more dark. And then gradually as we get closer to the light source, um, it gets lighter. That gives images their 3D appearance. This doesn't only work with circle shapes, but this also works with any shape that you would like to put in a uh, 3D looking environment. So right here, I'm getting three, it looks like three, maybe four, four different green color pencils. And kind of the same way we did in the practice before with the rectangle, we are now going to use green color pencils that have different levels or value. So like I said earlier, each color has a value depending on how dark or rich that color is that determines how dark it's going to look on paper and it can graduate from there so as you see that particular green color pencil is pretty dark and it's kind of close to the color black if you notice it's not exactly black it doesn't have the value of black but it's close so if we turned everything grayscale meaning we turned everything uh, in shades and hues of gray, uh, you would see that that darkest green would be more closer to black uh, compared to the other shades of green that I'm using. And like I said, from there, I use a mid-tone green, and then after that, I use a lighter green. And as you guys can see, my light source is on top of the circle. So, of course, as you get more closer to the light source, you won't use as much color.
In this part of the demo, I'm going to show that you can use crayons to do the same thing as the color pencils. So same concept. If you want more value, use more hand pressure. Again, you want to be careful in your materials. Uh, these crayons are a little bit more sturdy because they're like the twistable crayons. But if you're like using regular crayons, uh, just keep in mind not to squeeze the crayon too hard uh, as you're shading. But use the most pressure at the end and use medium pressure in the middle. Then you use light pressure at the very end. Take your time going back and forth um, using secular and cross hatching and hatching motions. So remember those definitions. Um, and making sure everything is smoothed and blended. That is really what's going to give a good shaded and blended look. From here, I practically do the same thing like I did in the last demo. I pick three colors that are kind of sorted in the same color family. Now, I am going to admit that these colors aren't exactly in the same color family. That red is a little warmer, a little bit more warmer than the purples and pinks that I use, but it still works because they're close enough to still show the difference of value. So now we are gonna get to the actual like art part where we're actually drawing something. Um, so I switched from computer paper to just regular sketching paper. Um, you could find affordable sketchbook paper in your stores like Michael's and Walmart and even Walgreens. Now, during this time uh, of uncertainty, it's probably not a good idea to go out. So if you don't have sketchbook paper, it's okay to use computer paper. But if you do have sketchbook paper, feel free to whip it out for this part. At this time, I'm just sketching out my image. So the focus today will be on ribbons. Now, the reason I pick ribbons for this particular project or uh, subject matter is because if you ever looked at a ribbon, uh, because of its satin type of material, uh, it's highly reflective. So you get an opportunity to see the ends of that particular ribbon uh, be dark or darker in hue where usually any place where the light bends or any place where the light touch it causes a high reflective highlight so as you see starting off I'm starting off with my darker color and then I'm moving on to my mid-tone and then lighter color and then, this is a little like, you know, technique here. I'm leaving the area open for where the highlight or the light source is gonna shine. I also, on this particular ribbon, use a white color pencil. Uh, luckily, that white color pencil is opaque enough to show up on that paper. But if you don't have a white color pencil that can do that, uh, it's totally acceptable to just leave the area white leaving the area white allows the paper to show through which is completely fine and is actually kind of what a lot of artists do
So, since moving on, uh, we are now focusing on our yellow ribbon. So, since it's like the red ribbon, I get three similar colors. A very dark yellow, a mid-tone yellow, and kind of a really bright, almost lemon color yellow. And as you see, I'm kind of taking my time. Any area that is away from light, it is dark because it is the shade. And then any part of the ribbon that is close to light uh, gets either a lighter color or is left completely white. Thus giving the idea that the ribbon is uh, curving and it has some type of form. Like I said, don't you don't want to color things as one flat image because it will just kind of give the appearance of it being on one plane. Um, you want to always kind of do variations of colors of values and hues if if you want something to kind of resemble um, anything from real life. I think the favorite part of this whole picture is this blue ribbon. Out of all the other ribbons that I drew in color, I kind of like how this one is coming out. You get an opportunity to see a lot of different variations of color. Like I said, that dark blue is really giving the appearance of like, you know, shade. And like, as you see, like you, you guys see how like that red ribbon is crossing with that blue ribbon. That red ribbon, if you would see that in real life, is casting a shadow over the blue ribbon. So that means that surrounding area where that red ribbon is passing through uh, is causing that area to look a lot darker than what it is. So you would put some type of indication of shade um, or darker value there to indicate that. So shading doesn't just give uh, the idea of an, an, an object in a 3D place, but it also gives the idea of space. So basically think like this. Anything that's closer to you and is not blocked by anything will be lighter because it's closer to the light. Anything that's further away or being blocked by something will have a darker value. So that's something good to remember when you are drawing. Um, also keep in mind that this is not always the case, but in this case, this is the case. So I hope you guys enjoyed that lesson. You know, I had fun getting to draw and shade and sketch and highlight and color. Um, got a chance to show off some different materials as you saw in the video. You don't necessarily need the most highest grade uh, art materials. Uh, crayons works as well. I so happen to have Prism Color color pencils. I've had those for years and those were just sitting around my house. But feel free to use any type of other uh, crayons, color pencil, whatever to your disposal. At this point in time, probably in your art uh, journey, you're learning, you're still learning. And the goal isn't to get the most expensive materials, but it's to get what works for you. So I want, when I, when I did this lesson, I wanted to make sure like anybody can do this. Anybody can just sit down and learn how, learn the basics of shading and learn about value and light and darkness and hue and all those fun things about drawing the point in this video was for you to kind of get down the basics about shading and you know as you saw in the video the more you learn about like value and shading the more you can actually make your objects more three-dimensional so those circles that i was going over on that worksheet basically if you guys notice it, it gave you know when i was shading it it gave the circles more depth um, and that's important you know since coloring things is one flat color one flat shade 
uh, flattens out the image. And that's fine in certain circumstances, but when you're trying to make an object look, look like it's in some type of space or some type of um, you know area, you have to know about shading and lighting. So if you got some questions for us, feel free to email us at gotquestions at bgcstl.org. Again, that's gotquestions at bgcstl.org. So I hope this lesson was helpful for you. I hope you guys picked up some new skills. Maybe you can add it to your drawings, you know, post stuff on social media, get you get you some likes, some views, um, you know, all that fun stuff about being an artist. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you guys stay safe, stay well, and stay healthy. And we'll catch you some other time when we do these videos. God bless.